get another voice in. It's been a very, very rough week for the market. Alok Sama of Bear Capital joins in uh, to talk about how deep the cut has been. The Alok, morning. Thanks very much for joining in. How have you read the turn of events over the last few days and how much stock prices have uh, fallen? Do you think most of the damage is in the price already? Well, let's, let's, let's put that discussion in a, in a global context and let's talk about flow of funds first of all. I think broadly uh, there's, there's no denying the fact, and I and others have talked about this, that there's a broad reallocation out of emerging markets in favor of developed markets. Uh, in fact, I believe there was an FT headline that suggested that you had seven billion last week flowing out of emerging markets, uh, which, is, which is quite a significant number in a compressed period of time. I think that is driven by a number of factors, um, 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 you know, some of which are just plain investor psychology. And you, when you had something that's run up in the way emerging markets have run up, uh, um, uh, there is a tendency always to, uh, to pause, take breath. Uh, there is a perception that emerging markets are expensive. Uh, India in particular is among the most expensive. Uh, in fact, it is the single most or was uh, certainly the single most uh, significant market uh, that was uh, the most expensive markets in terms of significant uh, global markets. Um, so uh, th there is a perception that, that emerging markets were overvalued. There is a perception that uh, recovery in the Western world and the U.S. in particular might turn out to be more robust than people believe. Uh, there is, if you look at recent events, uh, a, uh, a perception that people have uh, underestimated the political risk dimension uh, associated with investing in all emerging markets. Um, and, and then very importantly, there's been a lot of focus on inflation and food price inflation in particular because that tends to be a very big co component of the consumer basket in emerging markets. So, so you put all that together, it's a case of emerging markets and India is no exception going out of fashion. And, uh, and that's a lot of what you've seen going on over the, uh, over the uh, uh, last few uh, weeks. Uh, we take the view that with respect to India, uh, the worst is, uh, is probably behind us and the correction by and large is healthy. And I'm happy to talk about some of the underlying issues with respect to India in detail. By the way, some news on Noida toll bridge. It seems tolls will be increased to the quantum of 25%. That's on cars and LCVs. The stock should likely react to that news. Alok, morning. That's the big question actually about the flows. Uh, this has been a rough week for us. Do you expect there may be more in terms of selling pressure? Well, if you look at the FII flow numbers from um, um, for India in the month of January, I was actually surprised. I thought the numbers in terms of outflows would be quite significant. The actual number is just over a billion dollars, which is not a lot. Uh, so I think that uh, there are local technical factors, short covering, etc., which I must say I'm, I'm not sure I completely understand. Uh, but but I don't I don't think that the uh, uh, I, I think the dramatic outflows out of India are, uh, are probably up behind us. That may be optimistic on my part, but that's certainly our view. Anecdotally, uh, we've been out, our fund management team has been out in, uh, in Europe. We were out there last week raising money. And we probably had the best set of meetings in terms of quality of interaction and people's willingness to engage. And, and to look at India from an investment perspective, and we're talking about equity markets here as opposed to FDI or, uh, um, or any of that stuff. So I think there is, uh, uh, we're optimistic uh, is the bottom line. So we've been, uh, we're currently at 80% net long in our long short equity fund. Uh, we intend to increase that. We think there's values out there. We think there's values in, uh, in financial services and banks in particular. Um, so we're increasing our exposure to, uh, to that space. Uh, we're pulling back on other sectors which have run up in anticipation of, uh, in fact, we've invested in anticipation of being geared to uh, global recovery, IT services in particular. So that's kind of how we see it. So we're a little bit, uh, uh, our view is perhaps a little bit different, more bullish than what you might read in the headlines. Look, what kind of levels do you think this market is supported at uh, from the perspective of, of the index or the nifty? Well, I think it's possible. I mean, I think volatility is a fact of life given all that you have going on. But, but we kind of think on, from a fundamental perspective because, I mean, you know, let's not forget it's all about earnings at the end of the day. The earnings picture has been fairly robust. So I think a, uh, 
you know, somewhere around sort of, you know, 17.5, even 8 on the Sensex and 5,000 uh, on the Nifty, I think are, are reasonable levels to think of in terms of the markets being uh, well supported. Just on that point you were making about liquidity, though, Alok, are you seeing it in terms of redemption pressures, whether for India funds or BRIC funds? Well, I think that certainly happened. Um, I, I think you've seen that. Well, just anecdotally, I mean, I was at a Goldman Sachs conference in uh, in mid-January, and one of their top trades was uh, was um, uh, uh, long Taiwan and short India. I mean, I guess seeing Taiwan as a as a market that's that's geared towards uh, uh, you know growth and aggregate demand in the Western world, and India sort of being the poster child for attractive emerging markets, which are now you know sort of uh, pulling back. Um, so I think I think there was there were clear there was clearly shades of that. I would like to think that the worst of that is uh, is is behind us, uh, and I think that the correction is in fact healthy and provides a, a, a base for the market to build on and to recover over the next few months. So have you started buying in India, Alok, over the last few sessions and have you increased your net longs? Uh, we, we, as I said, we are buyers of these levels. So we are, uh, we are building up from our 80% net long position. Uh, we expect to get that up to somewhere in the region of 90 in short order. The big concern when we speak to a lot of investors remains the inflation uh, issue, Alok. Is that a big deal to your mind as well? And do you feel we're running a bit behind the curve here? We think that, again, with respect to India, that the inflation fears are probably overdone. Uh, and let's talk through that a little bit. Uh, we think that, uh, uh, you know, while longer term, if you want to talk about two to three years, I think there's very important supply bottlenecks that drive uh, oil prices higher. But I think in the near term, uh, you've probably seen the worst of, uh, of the run-up in oil prices. So I think there's potential for some moderation. I think you've seen that in the last day or so already in oil prices. I think with respect to food prices, you had a... Um, 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 a bit of a supply shock in the case of uh, in the prices of vegetables in particular in India but let's not forget we had a good monsoon uh, that India is a net exporter of grains and uh, it is a case of supply bottlenecks um, uh, that that are uh, uh, that are preventing the, the the flow of food grains into the market and I think once that happens uh, people get much more comfortable with the overall outlook for food prices in India. Um, so I actually think that uh, that we are, uh, it's clearly a concern, uh, but we think that the Reserve Bank of India has been by and large uh, ahead of the curve in terms of tightening, and we think that the, uh, uh, the fears with, with, with respect to uh, commodity prices, food prices, oil in particular, are, um, are, are likely to recede. Um, so we are concerned, very watchful, but, uh, but again, perhaps not as concerned as some of the headlines might suggest, as other people seem to be. Okay, Alok, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining in this morning.